Hello guys and welcome to the Music Empire. This is the channel where we spread the gospel of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ through the talents he has given us. And in today's lesson, we want to take a look at ruthless voices. Like we, we just want to explain ruthless voices in our own terms. Because of late, this is one of the requests I've been getting a lot on our platform. Like, can you explain ruthless voices? So we are here to do that today. Uh, and even before I, I start talking about ruthless voices, I want you to know that ruthless voices has been explained into details in our contemporary gospel course found on our website musicempire.com. If you haven't visited musicempire.com yet, please do well by visiting the, the website. There are lots of wonderful courses over there and, and you'll be blessed by these courses. So what I'm coming to do over here is just, uh, let me say a summary, but, but I'm coming to explain things in our own terms. So what I'm coming to do over here will end up being a summary of all the detailed stuff that we talked about in the contemporary course. Now, I'm, I'm just coming to explain the concept of ruthless voices from a lay person's perspective. Yes, so I'm coming to do away with these theoretical and technical terms and stuff. I'm coming to explain this so that even someone who doesn't know anything about music will understand, okay? So, let's get started. Uh, I may be using basically the key of C and then maybe the key of F when I'm explaining. So, when we talk about ruthless voices, I think the first word that we have to consider here is root, the root itself, because it's the root that is of focus here. And then now we have, we have turned it into a rootless voice, which means that there's no root here. As we're talking about the root, or let me say the root notes, what are the root notes when you are playing a song? So let's say we are in the key of C. Then we know the major scale for C will be the C, D, right? Yeah, and this is basically what we use to form our progressions. So, What did I just do? 1 to the 7, to the 6, to the 5, to the 4, right? Yeah. So, if you take a look at what I was playing over here, my root notes is this, are the C, the B, the A, the, the G, and then the F, right? Which is the 1, 7, 6, 5, 4. And, and the root note is very important even as an observer, because it helps you identify my progressions. So, if I'm in the key of C and I'm doing this, you know I'm playing what? A 1, 2, to the 3, right? Yes. And uh, basically, the concept of rootless voices is for you to take away the root. You see, my, my, my whole left hand is just playing a single note. When do we even apply rootless voices? You know, uh, technically speaking, you know, technically speaking, we all play with a band, right? And there's a bass guitar player. So if there's a bass guitar player, then there is no need for you to do stuff like this. You see? Yeah. One, you can interfere with the bass guitarist. And number two, it's like you are not making full use of the resources that God has given you. What are these resources? Your fingers. We have ten fingers. As much as possible, you should be able to use all these ten fingers very efficiently. Okay, so what we do here is, is uh, instead of playing octaves, we convert uh, these octaves into chords on our left hand as well, and this makes the sound more heavier. Yes. So this is this is the whole concept about rootless voices, uh, the ability to convert these left hand root notes into chords. Now, the word rootless is used here because for some of the chord constructions that you see on your left hand, you may not necessarily see the root note inside. Let me give you a, a, a practical example over here. Suppose I want to play, I want to do this, right? And then I'll do this, right? So I have three, six, and then two, okay? I want to I want to play this uh, in a rootless form manner. I could just do okay. What did I just do? Yeah. 
So look at what I will, I will explain what happened on my left hand, but let's look at what is going on here. First it was three six to the two. Now it is the first chord was was on a three, right? It's on a three. Now look at my left hand carefully. Do you see a three inside? No, there's no three inside. Look at this, look at this note. Yes, so the root itself is not included in the tray. So it becomes a rootless voicing. Now, one thing you can do with rootless voicings or what makes you stand out when you apply rootless voicings is that it's very hard for someone to even be able to identify what you are playing or even the key that you are playing. Imagine, I, imagine I'm, I'm playing the keyboard and then you come and see me play this chord. Like you are behind me watching and I play this chord. Like what am I playing? How can you even guess that this chord is over the E bass note in the key of C? It's very hard for you to guess. But if I'm doing it like this, then you know that, oh, I'm playing a 3 in the key of C, right? Or a 7 in the key of F. Very good. So, this is a rootless voicing. The second chord I played was this. This is over the 6, right? Look, is there a 6 in this chord? No, this is a 5 flat 2, 4. There's no six. Once again, this becomes a rootless voice because the root note itself is not found within the chord I'm playing. More specifically on my left hand. Okay. And then I have this. I have this as my two. Take a look at my left hand. I have what? The F or the four, six, one, three. There's no two inside. Yeah. This is these are rootless voices. So I believe right now you understand root notes versus or, or root voices versus rootless voices. Yeah, first of all, what you want to establish is that uh, when it comes to rootless voices, your left hand will definitely play a chord. Now, for the chord, mostly you may not find the root note in, in, in the chord itself, but that does not mean that for all the time you will not find the root note in the chord itself. To me, rootless voices is just to omit the root note. And then turn that root note into a chord on your left hand. Yes. So, for example, I could have just done this, right? If I want to play a two like this, this is a two, right? This is a two. So, what I what I can do is take away this left, bring it over here, right? So my left hand is playing what my right hand was playing, so that I will get the freedom to do more exploit with my right hand. So I could, I could have done, uh, let's see. On a two so my right hand now has the freedom to do a leg you see and then the left hand is holding a chord then the bass guitarist will now do this yeah very good so it, it makes your play sound very rich and i'm telling you the, the application of rootless voices changes the, the the shape and nature and texture of, of, of chords okay so if you want to be able to play rootless voices then you have to also be playing complex chords on your left hand like what i just did no it's not necessary for you to do that so what you can do over here is this first of all convert all the chords that you play on your right hand including your passing chords and everything to your left hand learn how to do that i don't think you will spend a lot of time uh, transferring what you play on your right hand to your left hand right so for example uh, uh, this is how I play my 514 in the key of C. For example, I, I, I play it like this. This is my 514, okay? So, what I'm trying to tell you is that convert this 5 and then this 1. Sorry, I mean transfer this 5 and then this 1 and then this 4 to your left hand. Okay, so now you should be able to play it like this. When you sit down and then you give yourself some time, you'll be able to do that, right? After you have done this, the next question you can ask yourself is, so what am I doing with my right hand? The right can, can definitely, the right hand can definitely play a lick. Let's see. Uh, I mean, probably you may have heard this in a song. When you listen to these foreign gospel songs, there are a lot of licks over these progressions. Over 7, 3, 6, over 3, 5, 2, whatever, whatever. Over every progression, there will, there will surely be a lick. So you just 
I'm just giving you this link. So this is a 514 in the key of C, right? That's how it is. So that the bass player will do this. Yeah. And then the next thing you can do, the next tip I want to give you here is um as you are playing this five and then this one. You see, sometimes you may have two chord variations. You see, sometimes you may know how to play two or more chords on one note. For example, on the one, you see you have the triad itself and then we have the suspended. So let's say you have this as your one and then you have this as your one, right? And then you can even do a major seventh as your one. So you have three uh, chords that you play on your one. What you can do is, let's say, you may you may you may choose to play the source two on your left, and then the major seventh on your right. Now this becomes your one chord, like this. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, or you can do the the second second inversion of the triad that you know already, and then do the source here. Now all these things are way better than doing. This makes you look like a beginner. Or, well, not, not necessarily a beginner, but you are not that confident and, 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 and you are not that professional compared to someone who is who is playing court on both hands when there is a full band. Yes. So it's just a matter of you sitting down and then transferring your court. Now, when it comes to complex stuff as well, you can choose to apply different techniques on your left hand. For example, let me give you this technique. If, instead of playing the root note, you can play its tritone instead. Okay, so for for instance, what's the tritone of one? It's the three and the flat seven. Yeah, see, you you can clearly see that I'm moving a little bit fast, and then I'm I'm just summarizing in this lesson. If you want to understand all these things, how I'm able to construct all these chords, and even how how these chords are constructed and invented, then um, get the contemporary chords. It will really help you. Everything has been broken down into details. So, for instance, this tritone thing I'm coming to talk about right now is broken down into details. How tritones are constructed in our contemporary course. Okay. So, so if you want to do this um, rootless chord voicing concept, one of the ways to do it is just to convert that root note into a tritone. Okay. So, instead of playing the one root note, just play the third and the flat seven. That's how a tritone is constructed. And now you are still free to do your one chord so instead of doing this just play try to like this okay instead of playing a four like this just play the try to of a four now a try to of a four is this okay this is a try to of a four okay so look this is the four right so we have the flat seven and the third the fourth is f right so we have the flat seven and the third like i said i don't have enough time to be explaining all these things in the details they have all been explained in the contemporary course so listen to these sounds. I have this, then I have four. four. Let's see, one, four. Now look at this. Listen to it carefully. Versus, and then we have. Now we can play a five. Instead of playing a five like this, right? This is very light compared to this. This is the tritone of your five root notes. Yeah. So just convert them into tritones. You can also decide to convert these root notes into major servants or minor servant chords. Okay. So for instance, uh, so let's let, let just say you want to do an F. You want to play an F chord. Right. What am I saying? You can convert this F note into a major servant note. So what do you do? Right, so let's say the chord you want to play on the F is this. This is a chord that we all know, a very basic triad. You can just do right. So, so just listen to the sound and then judge for yourself. Look, compared to now we have. So imagine there was a bass player. Your 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 chord will sound very rich and very full. So I'm playing the same chord I would have played even as a beginner on my right hand. But with the concept of, well, of ruthless voices, you see I'm able to convert this to my left hand. Now remember, this is my own 
I'm, I'm explaining it to you like a lay person from my own perspectives and also using this opportunity to explain how I'm able to play court on the left hand and on the right hand. Okay, but then there's another level where we can take these ruthless voices to. I think I'll do a part two on the ruthless voices where we'll go into deep concepts. For now, I just want you to grasp the basic concepts and, and every, every, all the knowledge, all the basic knowledge about ruthless voices. Okay, and then even as you are waiting for the next part where we'll dig deep into advanced tasks, for example, like if I want to play this, if I want to play a 736 in the key of C. Normally, I would have done this, right? Then, six. It's perfect, right? Seven, three, six. Now, over here, I'm doing. Then, I'm doing this. Okay, it doesn't make sense. See the seven. Now, this is a pure ruthless voice, and there's no seven in it. Right? There's no seven. And then, look at my three. Uh, there's no three in this chord. I think I explained this earlier. There's no three chord. And then look at the six. Look at my left hand. There's no six. This is the six. There's no six in this one. Yes. Uh, um, I want you to be able to digest the few things that we have talked about in this lesson. And what will happen is there will be a part two of this lesson. Now in the part two, we will get into these. Now, these are the pure... If, if we want to talk about pure ruthless voices, these are your ruthless voice this is over a two but there's, there's no two there's no two but this chord is over a two right then we have see this is where a five and we cannot see a five in the whole of this chord itself there's no five in it right but this is over the five over the g over the so but there's no so and then we have and then this is over the one See, look at my left. Now, I think you understand this. This is the tritone of the one. But look at my right hand. Okay, there's a one here. But then still, it doesn't really make sense for you to say that this is over a one. Then uh, we have this. This is over a four. This is a four chord. Now, you don't see any four. This is a four in the key of C. And the, and the, the, the note starts on the five, six, one, three, five, six, one, three. There's no four. But I'm telling you it's a four chord. In the part two of our ruthless voices, we will we will we will uh, demystify all these things. Maybe well we may be able to use this progression. Okay, all these progressions. We, you cannot see any of the roots included. But for us to get to this level, I need you to understand everything that I've talked about over here. Okay. And I can I, I agree with you. I was moving very fast, very quick. No practicality here. Fine. I took my time to explain all of these, all all of everything I've talked about here into details, into into details with with song applications and all that in the contemporary course. So if you have the contemporary course and you are watching this lesson, this is a very good chance for you to revisit it and then watch it again, right? And 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 I'm not sure. You'll be surprised about anything i talked about over here if you don't have it please try your best to get it on our website the link has been left in the description try your best to get it uh, there will surely be a part two of this lesson i hope what we did here helps with your understanding about ruthless voices so uh, god richly bless you subscribe if you haven't turn on your notifications and uh, please share the link for others to be blessed as well there are a lot of people who want to understand these things very well, especially these with little voices and others. So share with your friends as well. Let them also subscribe. Let us grow together. Okay. Remember, we are spreading the gospel of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ through the talent He has given us. Okay. So make sure that you you really take this serious and practice it. Uh, let's meet in our next lesson.